Hello and welcome to MSHope.com. The truth about the importance of blood flow for patients with multiple sclerosis continues to be unnecessarily controversial and polarizing with many questions unanswered. Explosive terms like debunked or junk science are consistently used in the media despite the truth that potential blood flow problems for people with MS has only been seriously considered for less than a decade. So, as an MS patient and health enthusiast, I decided to take a closer look at this blood flow issue, known as CCSVI, and travel to Ferrara, Italy to meet the man at the center of this controversy, Dr. Paolo Zamboni, to find some answers. When I arrived in Ferrara, I traveled to Dr. Zamboni's research facility at the University of Ferrara. When I arrived, I was given a tour by the Chair of Medical Physics, Mauro Gambassini. He gave me an in-depth tour of the university's blood flow research facility, and I learned that Dr. Zamboni and his team had been contracted by NASA to accurately measure the blood flow of astronauts. So, when Dr. Zamboni is not investigating blood flow issues for patients with neurodegenerative diseases, he's helping the world's most elite space program. The tour was great, and learning about the NASA project was very interesting. But since I was unlikely to travel to space anytime soon, I was more interested in having my own blood flow checked by one of the world's top vascular specialists, and to learn why there is such variability in research that studied blood flow in MS patients around the world. Thank you. How are you, Matt? I'm good, how good. are you? Yeah. Hello. Hello. As I have stated before, I traveled to Poland in 2010 to have my jugular veins checked when Dr. Zamboni found that MS patients had a higher prevalence for blockages in these veins. When it was discovered that my left jugular vein was 100% blocked and my right jugular vein was 50% blocked, I had the venoplasty and experienced the reduction of brain fog, depression, and sleep disturbances. Now, five years later, Dr. Zamboni was going to check my veins. It was a stressful experience, but if NASA trusts Dr. Zamboni and his team to accurately measure blood flow, why shouldn't I? The flow through the vein is dependent on the cross-sectional area. And now we may assess the flow. And the flow is good. So what, so what you saw, would I have CCSVI? No. No. You do not have uh, the criteria of uh, chronic cerebrospinal venous insufficiency. Although on the left side, uh, the flow cannot be defined as normal flow. Right. But your right side is really good, so there is always a dominant part, also in normal people. Right. So your right is certainly better. Right. Although my blood flow wasn't perfect, I was happy to hear that the venoplasty I had five years before was still effective and I didn't have the criteria of CCSVI, or in simple terms, bad blood flow from my brain. Now I needed to learn why the clinical trials for blood flow in MS patients were so varied and controversial. There is a, a big controversy because uh, uh, n not all authors confirmed the presence of CCSVI in MS. They used the widely system, non-invasive system uh, available, that is echo color Doppler. Yeah. So my point is that uh, certainly something is not right in the machinery that are currently adopted. If you look to train it and not train it, the orange are MS, the green are LC controls. Mm -hmm. So you may find that there is a highest prevalence of CCSVI in multiple sclerosis skin is in center, train it to color Doppler, and uh, they did not find nothing 
neither in controls, neither <laughs> in, in a mess. So, right. so but these are, these are huge differences. Very huge. But so, so, so what, what is the difference between trained and not trained? The trained, you see, orange is a mess, green is healthy. They did not find the problem for one, two, three. CCSVI does not exist as a medical entity. Right. This uh, suggests us that this kind of color Doppler assessment uh, cannot be more used mm -hmm. because uh, uh, we need of something that can be used reliably all over the world from all the operators, whatever kind of instrument or training. Uh, or so we have uh, we need of something better mm -hmm. the assistance because this is uh, really the core of the controversy. Proper training of the Echo Doppler is clearly a problem and resulted in findings that were very different than Dr. Zamboni. But Dr. Zamboni explained that there is a deeper problem beyond training. The, the main problem is the current instrument adopt this formula for measuring the flow. The flow is Q, flow, mm -hmm. time average velocity multiplied for cross-sectional area of the jugular vein. So this is your vessel, the cross-sectional area is calculated from the diameter. Mm -hmm. Because you may measure the velocity of the flow, that is the second component of the formula, only in the longitudinal aspect of the vessel. So you may apply the circle area formula, R squared for 3.14, mm -hmm. but the actual machinery assume that the vessel is circular. Like a tube. Like a tube. Yeah. But the section mm -hmm. of internal jugular vein is not circular. So this kind of measurement is inaccurate because the jugular vein is elliptical. You may see this very well. The carotid is circular. The artery is circular. Mm -hmm. But the vein is elliptical. So how does that change the measurement? Completely. Because the ellipsis area is not uh, the same calculation of the circle area. This is one of the reasons. So you currently calculate the area as a circular shape that is elliptical shape. Right. And this makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. What Dr. Zamboni is saying is that the research projects that found radically different results from his findings were using a blood flow measurement based on the assumption that the jugular vein was circular and not elliptical. This is a major problem because the true shape of a jugular vein is an ellipse, not a circle. This would result in completely different and inaccurate results. But that wasn't all. Second reason the pulsatility nature of the jugular. This means that we calculate just one measure of area, but we have approximately 200 different area each cardiac cycle. No. So currently you have just one, but each heartbeat you have 200 different measurements. So this is really inaccurate. And the problem is that also MR, studies with MR, consider the jugular a rigid tube, but it's a pulsatile tube. And this can be seen at naked eye. Mm -hmm. Everybody may see that the jugular vein is a pulsatile vessel. So the cross-sectional area of this formula is always different. The 
second component is velocity. Right. We have a major problem in the region called J1, is of a confluence with the subclavian vein, and this is a very turbulent region, and it has been calculated that the error, instrumental error, not human error, instrumental error in measuring the velocity in that point is about 30%. So you are actually multiplying 30% error of velocity with an incorrect measurement of area. That's totally wrong. So this may explain us the big variability among studies. So we are now trying to overcome the problem. We are studying a new kind of assessment. This assessment uh, is an assessment measuring from a video clip all the area variation along the cardiac cycle. We may have uh, contemporaneously the distensibility of a carotid artery. So we may have pump, inflow, and outflow all synchronized. And this may permit us a better assessment of the flow coming from the brain. So, the bottom line is that problems with the training of the echo Doppler operator and the use of different mathematical equations in properly measuring blood flow have resulted in a wide variety of findings. Luckily, Dr. Zamboni recognizes these complex issues and he and his team are working to create technology and protocols that will standardize this process and result in accurate measurements of blood flow through the jugular for patients with MS and other neurodegenerative diseases. If this, uh, this, this experiment, this study will be good, I think that very rapidly we may have a new assessment that can be performed all over the world. So this may overcome many problems in this field, I think. Mm -hmm. I hope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then how, does it, how would this translate to treatment? Treatment is a very complex issue because the first is that not all the CCSVI cases can be efficiently managed by balloon angioplasty. I think that the minority can be can be responsive to this kind of, uh, of treatment. Actually, we do not have venous stenting, and this is a problem. We performed good uh, open angioplasty, but this is really in operation. So to perform this kind of procedure for people that uh, cannot respond to balloon angioplasty, you need of uh, proper studies. The good news is that the research in regards to blood flow and MS continues around the world. The bad news is that this field of research is pejoratively called junk science by some of the media, even though this science has just begun. Further, it appears to me that it will take many years before a standard blood flow measurement protocol is accepted and many more before we have a proper treatment for this cardiovascular issue that may affect MS patients. Okay, thank you very much. That's great. Okay. Excellent. So that was my trip to meet Dr. Paolo Zamboni. Although conclusions in regards to blood flow for MS are many years away, don't be discouraged. They're still working hard, and this area of research has not been abandoned. In the meantime, I'm going to stick to my strict diet, supplements, and exercise regime, which, coincidentally, have an enormous impact on my cardiovascular health. This is a different way. This is MS Hope.